Hi there, my name is Isaac Oster. I'm a tech artist with Imaginary Studios. Uh, my area of expertise is in building tools for Unreal using the Unreal Python API. I have a course here for anybody that's interested in getting their feet wet called Utilizing Python for Editor Scripting in Unreal Engine. It is available on the dev community, the Epic Dev community, and it'll walk through a lot of the basics in terms of the installation, how to use the, uh, the API documentation, and so on. And I uh, came across this really interesting article by Sean Comley a couple weeks ago. Sean is a solutions architect with Epic. And this article covers common issues that productions run into when trying to do renders using the movie render queue. But the applications are broad. You could totally get a lot of benefit from the information contained in this, this uh, article if you're doing games or, or any, uh, a number of any other applications that you might, you might be working on uh, with Unreal. So highly recommend giving it a look. And uh, what I did once I read it is I wanted to see what issues we might be running into on our production. So I began writing up a series of utilities to, to try to identify uh, some of the issues. So um, the issues that are brought up, not all of them will be addressed in this course, but uh, uh, just quickly. Uh, so we're gonna be looking uh, to confirm that data maps are linear, confirming our textures are all a power of two, if they are not a multiple of four, they're going to be uncompressible. If they have alpha channels, they're not going to be compressible. And we want to make sure that they are set to streamable. And if you're unclear on what streaming is, again, it is covered in great detail here uh, by Sean Comley's article, Life Cycle of a Texture in Unreal Engine. So definitely recommend taking a look at that. All right, we're going to be using a lot of, uh, well, not a lot, but we will be referring to the Python API documentation for Unreal 5.1. And you can kind of confirm, or I guess in this case it's 5.0. It doesn't really make that much difference. In fact, it looks like they haven't updated this yet. 5.1 is like brand new. So, so I think we're probably still working out some of the bugs in terms of the uh, peripheral systems here, including the documentation. All right, so let's take a look at the code here. This is something that is covered in the, uh, the intro course. So I'm not going to go uh, through it line by line in terms of writing it, but I will tell you what it does. We're going to make an empty list here to store our static mesh actors. We are going to collect all of the actors in the level and then iterate over, over that list. And if the actor is an instance of the static mesh actor class, then we'll go ahead and grab it. And then we'll return that list. So I'm just gonna go ahead and once I've got the, uh, the actors, the next thing that I'm gonna wanna do here is get all of the materials on the actors and then get all of the textures on the materials. And then we can kind of run through this list that I, I uh, just mentioned. All right, so I'm gonna make a new function here. Go ahead and import this code here. All right, so we can see we have 8,600 and change uh, different materials. So oh, sorry, um, uh, static mesh actors. So that is awesome because there's going to be all kinds of opportunities in here for us to find potential issues. I'm not picking on this level. There's nothing in here that is unusual for any production. It's it uh, seems to be very well done. These kinds of things are just sort of standard issue. That's you know whenever there are uh, human beings working on things, there's just going to be things that uh, aren't configured perfectly, especially when there are this many. So again, big thanks to the uh, the person that put this together. I really appreciate making it available to the community, and I think it's going to be useful as a test bed. All right, so we've got all of our actors here. Now we need to get the materials. And if you're unclear about how to do that, you can just hop over to the documentation. Punch in the name of the class that we're curious about. Grab the first one here. So down at the bottom, all the material information is going to be stored in the static mesh component. So we can go ahead and take a look at that. So there isn't going to be anything about materials in here, but it inherits from mesh component. Mesh component is going to have uh, something useful on it. Let me go ahead and see if I can open up my search here. Well, uh, maybe it's different here than on Chrome. Control F is not bringing up my search. Doesn't matter. What I'm looking for is 
down a bit. It's going to be get materials. So we'll go ahead and make an array called materials. All right, so this is going to return an array of material interface objects. So we're going to go ahead and uh, if the material is unique, we'll add it into our materials. We don't want to have multiple instances of the same material here. Just to kind of confirm this is working, let's just print the length of our materials. So we'll need to grab reload. All right, so we have 231 materials in this level, which is great. Oh, the other thing that's, that the, the reason I'm setting the code up this way uh, very quickly is I don't necessarily need to debug every texture in the project. If only one level is causing problems, I, I want to be able to isolate my search here to try to find issues uh, within a specific level. So that's why I'm using the editor actor subsystem as opposed to the editor asset library, which would give me a path to every texture in the, in the whole project. So, all right, in the next video, we will continue this on, getting the textures and then beginning to book around and some of the texture data and see what we can find.